Dear students, welcome back to the video solution of the quantitative aptitude session of CVT model exam. So, we can consider which are the questions asked in this question. Through this question also you can develop some of the basic ideas uh, from the various areas of quantitative aptitude. At the same time you can develop some of the strategies or how to approach such an exam effectively. So, it should be a a uh, time effective approach that we have to practice like that. We can move to the question. So, here our first question is an interesting question. Uh, B is twice as old as A. So, hope you are well aware about age problems. Then how we can consider such a type of an, an age problem here. B is twice as old as A but twice younger than F. C is half the age of A but is twice older than D who is the second oldest. So, I will teach you how to start the assumptions for this type of a question. So, maybe while reading the statement, uh, some of the students may be confused about that statement or the relationship between the ages of these persons. So, what you can do, here we know that here A, B, C, D and F, five persons here, A, B, C, D and F, understand E is not there is not there. B is twice as old as A. So, how we can write? If A is 1, the age of A is 1, we are starting our assumption like that, then the age of B is twice. So, never consider the algebraic substitution for this types of questions. You have to start the assumptions like this way. But, twice younger than F. So, this B is twice younger than f. So, that means here the relationship how we can connect it. Twice younger than f, it's it's bit confusing kind of statement. Twice younger than f means the difference between this b and f, the difference between this b and f, that should be twice of this value that's equal to 4. So, difference between the ages of b and f that is twice of this 2. So, then we can say that B is twice younger than F, twice younger than F. So, that is the basic idea of that kind of an assumption. Therefore, here what is the age of F? That is equal to 6. And the second statement, C is half the age of A. C is half the age of A. As the age of A as 1, we assumed like that. Therefore, the age of C, so that is 1 by 2, half the age of A, but is twice older than D. That means the age of C is twice of that of D. Therefore, D's age is half of that of C. So, this is the assumed set of values. If you are facing difficulty or facing confusion regarding these fractional values, what you can do? You just multiply all these values by 4 for avoiding that kind of a fractional operation when we are multiplying these all ratio values with 4. So, then what you will get? The age of A, we can assume that as 4, age of B, that is 8, age of C, that is 1 by 2 into 4, which is equal to 2, and age of C, 1 by 4 into 4, that is 1, and that of the last person, 6 into 4, which is equal to 24. So, what we are going to find out, who is the second oldest? Who is the oldest here? Here, the oldest is F. We need to find out the second oldest. So, who is second oldest here? That is 8, 8 in the sense that is B. So, therefore, the answer is B. So, this kind of a ratio-wise approach will help you to find the answer here. Now, consider the next question. 7 root x minus 24 equal to 11. We are going to find out the value of x. What you can do? 7 root x. So, that is nothing but 11 plus 24. So, that is equal to 35. So, this is 35. Then we can easily find out what is root x. That is 35 divided by 7, which is equal to 5. So, as root x equal to 5, therefore x is equal to 5 square, which is equal to 25 here. So, therefore, the answer here, root x equal to 5. Then we are going to find out the value of x. x is equal to 5 square, which is equal to 25 here. Now, the next question, in a 7 given numbers, the average of the first four numbers is 4 and that of the last four numbers is also 4. 
if the average of these seven numbers is 3, then the fourth number. Here, consider seven numbers A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Consider these three seven numbers here. So here up to G. So while we are considering these seven numbers, it is given that this entire average, entire average, average of these seven numbers is three. So average is three. But average of these four, so that is the first four, which is equal to four, and that of the last two four numbers is also four. Last two four numbers is also four. So here we know that this four is repeated here. Then how we have we can find out this middle number or the fourth number? That's very simple. Here sum of these four numbers, that is four times of four. Four, because their average is 4, therefore 4 times of 4. And the sum of these 4 numbers, that is also 4 times of 4. So which value repeated here? Here D repeatedly present here. We have to subtract the sum of the entire set of values. Here we have 7 numbers, its average is 3. So that's it. This is a simple type of operation. Understand? Here D is repeating in both the sets or both the selection while we are considering first four numbers and the last four numbers therefore what you can do so you just do it like this four times of sum of these two these two averages so therefore that's equal to this will be equal to 32 minus 21 so what is the value here that repeated number that is equal to 11 so here the answer is option one so that's the direct approaching style the ratio of the income to the expenditure of a family is 10 is to 7. If the family expenses are 10,500, then the savings of the family. Here we just consider income, expenditure, and savings. As we know, the ratio of income, if the ratio of incomes are uh, 10 is to 7, then the savings is nothing but the difference between these two values. That means 10 minus 7, that's equal to 3. So that's a simple logic. If the income is rupees 10 and the expenditure is rupees 7, then what is the savings there? Remaining, 3 rupees there. So therefore, we can express those values in this ratio form, 10 is to 7 is to 3. And it is given that the family's expenses is 10,500. So here, this 7 is representing 10,500. Then we are going to find out what is the savings of this family. So what this 3 represents, this we have to find out. You just simply observe 7 into which value will make this 10,500. So here we'll get the idea, this is 15 times of 7, that will be equal to 105, put two zeros here. So therefore here also we have to consider this is 3 into 1,500. What is 3 into 1,500? 3 into 1,000. 500. So what it is, which is equal to 4,500. So it's a simple unitary method for finding the answer. So the answer is 4,500. So move to the next question. So that's a ranking type question. Manu is seven ranks ahead of Aru in the class of 39 students. So there are a chart of 39 students in this class. If Aaron's rank is 17 the, from the last. So what is Manu's rank from the chart? From this chart, we have to find out it. So here we just consider the arrangement will be like this. So here, if it will be chart, and this is last, got it. So here, Arun's uh, rank is 17 the, from the last. So therefore, here Arun's, Arun's rank is 17 the, from the last. 17 the, from the last. And this Manu is 7 ranks ahead of Arun. So therefore, Manu is 7 ranks ahead of Arun. So that means this is equal to 17 plus 7. So that's equal to 24. So therefore, Manu's rank is 24th from last. 
and we have to find out what is Manu's rank from the start. So we have to consider if we are considering it's from here. So where the position of Manu here. That's a simple logic. So here, suppose this rank is x. Here we got Manu's rank from last is 24 and Manu's rank from start or the top that is x. So here 24 plus x. So what is 24 plus x? So that should be equal to this 39 plus 1. So that's a simple logic. So that will be equal to 39 plus 1. Or otherwise we can express it in another one way. This is 24 plus x minus 1 is equal to total number of students. Why? It is like this. Here we are considering the rank orders like this. So there we have to do the operations. I just explain it with a simple example. If you are considering 5 persons A, B, C, D, E. Here we have 5 persons. So Consider the rank of B. This rank of B from bottom, that is fourth rank, from top, that is second rank. What is the sum of this 4 plus 4 and 2? So that is equal to 6. 4 plus 2, that is 6. That means a rank of a person from bottom and top. While we are adding them, that is one more than the actual number of total persons here. So therefore, this minus 1, that's the total number of members. That's the simple logic we are applying here. So therefore, we got the idea this is 24 plus x, 24 plus x, which is equal to 40. Therefore, what is the value of x here? So that is 40 minus 24, which is equal to 16. Therefore, the rank from the top of Manu is 16th rank. That's, an, that's a very important understanding related to the rank concept. And the next question, LCM of two numbers is 28 times their HCF. The sum of HCF and LCM is 1740. If one of these numbers is 240, the sum of the digits of other number is. That's a very interesting number system based question. There are lots of tricky questions you can expect from the topic numbers what you have to consider as a prerequisites for doing these types of problems, you have to create a fundamental awareness about these concepts. Here in this question, it's not a direct or a simple LCM HSCF question. It's a little bit, little bit tricky. You have to create some more basic ideas about the concept of LCM and HSCF. And suppose if we have such a relationship that is HCF, LCM is 28 times of HCF. We are starting our assumption from here. Suppose the HCF of those two numbers, I just expressed that as H. So as per this given data, LCM, that is 28 times of HCF. It is given that the sum of HCF and LCM is 1740. So that is HCF plus LCM which is equal to 1740. So while observing these two assumed values here, HCF as H and LCM is 28H, the sum is simply 29H, so which is equal to 1740. So you just divide it with 29, so then we will get what is H. So when we are dividing this one, so here we know that 6 times of this value will make this 174.10 here. So we got HCF equal to 2. So if HCF equal to 2, we can easily find out what is the HCF here. If X, HCF equal to 60, HCF equal to 60, then what is this LCM? LCM is 28 into 60. Keep the values like this. You don't want to multiply it because we have to do the further simplification. So otherwise what you can do whenever we are multiplying them, then after that or for the multiplication itself you may take time. Then after that further simplification process at that time we have to again factorize them. So sometimes, not all the time. Therefore what you can do, uh, if you are in between a calculation steps, keep the values in that form itself. And what is the next point? Here it is given that one number is 240. 
then we have to find out another number. It is given that one number. So that is 240. We are going to find out the another number. So what is the trick we can apply here? We can connect these points here. We know that product of two numbers, product of two numbers is equal to the product of their LCM and HCF. So it's a very important understanding in this regard. So product of any two numbers equal to the product of their LCM and HCF. Here we have one number, one number into the other one that we are going to find out. That is equal to LCM into HCF. Here LCM is 60 into 28 and HCF is 60. So therefore what we can consider if we need to find out N2 that is simply 60 into 28 into 60 divided by 240. So here we can simplify it. So this is 4 times and this is 7 times. So therefore the other number is 420. So what is our requirement? What we are going to find out? Here we have to find out, find the sum of the digits of the other number, the 4. So why they asked like that instead of what is another number? So if, we are, if the question will be like that, what is another number? So you can catch it from the options. For avoiding such kind of a possibility, they ask the question like this way. So here, sum of digits of the second number. So that is 4 plus 2 plus 0, which is equal to 6 here. Therefore, the answer is option 2. Here, these two, very important understanding. So with the help of this concept, or uh, if we have the HCF like that, it is given that 28 times of HCF is LCM. By using this data, you can find out the value of HCF here. Through that way, you can find out the LCM and it is given that, or, or that's a basic result, product of any two numbers equal to product of their LCM and HCF. Okay, then move to the next question here. Here, rupees 864 is divided among ABC such that A times S share. A times S share is equal to 12 times B share is equal to 6 times C share. So previously we discussed the, these types of questions. So how we can find out the ratio between A, B and C from this type of a statement? What you can do, you just equate these expressions to the LCM of 8, 12 and 6. What is the LCM of 8, 12 and 6? So that is simply 24. So this is the LCM. LCM of 8, 12 and 6. Don't forget that. So if we, we are equating it with the LCM, so then we can easily find out A is to B is to C. If 8 A equal to 24, then what is the value of A? A equal to 3. If 12 B equal to 24, therefore B equal to 2. If 6 C is equal to 24, therefore C is equal to 8. Sorry. C is equal to 4. Therefore, this is the ratio. 3 is to 2 is to 4. So it is given that the total amount distributed as 864. Therefore, here as per the ratio values, that is 4 plus 2 plus 3, that is 9, is representing rupees 864. Then what we are going to find out? The, the share of B. So here share of B is represented by 2. So then we have to find out what this 2 represents. What do we have to do in such a type of unitary steps? If 9 is representing this much amount, then 2 is representing how much? So this is 864 divided by 9 into 2. So just simplify this one. This is equal to 9 into 9, that is 81. So remaining 54 here, so 6 times of 9, that is 54, into 2. Just multiply these values. This is equal to rupees 192. That's the share of B here. So therefore, the answer is option 4. 
Next question. Alan bought a TV with a 20% discount on the label the price. Label the price is same as mark the price or listed price. Had he bought it with a 25% discount? That means that's an if if condition. That's not actually happened. We are assuming like that. If there is a discount of 25%, he would have saved 500. At what price did he buy the TV? So understand. Here this 20% discount. So that's actual discount. So therefore we are considering. So here, so this is actual discount. This is actual discount. I am naming that as discount one. So this is 20% of this labeled price. I just express that as marked price. Marked price. That's the price listed on the product. So here the discount one that is the assumed discount, assumed discount that is we can consider as discount two. Here this is equal to 25% of market price. So just because of this new discount, he save he can save an additional 500 rupee. So understand the difference between these two values. So this is 5% of market price. So that is equal to rupees 500. So that is rupees 500. So we are going to find out at what price did he buy the TV. So therefore, here we can connect it. So here, 5% of the price, it is given as rupees 500. Then what's the amount he spent for buying TV? So that is, we can consider as a cost price here or the selling price in this transaction. So how much he spent for purchasing this product so that we can name it as selling price. So here, an actual discount is 20%. So therefore, we can consider this as 80% of market price. 80% of market price. By using this idea, we can easily connect it because here we know that this 5 is 500. Just multiply this value with 100. So applying the same unitary trick, this 80 is nothing but 8000 because after this 80 put two more zeros here. So therefore the answer is option one. This is a logical way understand we are not going to find out what was the actual mud price. Instead we are directly applying this unitary method to reach the conclusion quickly. Okay, then the next question. Shine drives to work at, at an average speed of 48 km per hour. The time taken to cover the first 60% of the distance is 10 minutes more than the time taken to cover the remaining distance. How far is his office? So here, a total distance. It's 60% of the distance he covered. So that's, uh, that's the, that time is 10 minutes more than the time taken for the remaining distance. So we have to find out the distance. Here we just consider the total distance as D. Here first portion that is 60% of D. So remaining part, portion that is 40% of D. So therefore what is the difference here? So this is 20% of D. Could it? What is this 10 minutes actually? This 20% of D, that distance, covered with a speed of 48 km per hour, that time is 10 minutes. 10 minutes, but don't forget, here this distance in kilometer, we assume like that, and the speed in kilometer per hour, then what's the conversion is required in this time expression? In which way we have to express time in this context? Here this 10 minutes we have to express it as hour. So how we can write it? 10 minutes that is 10 by 60 hours or 1 by 6 hours. 1 by 6 hours. From this chart we can catch what is this D. What is this D? So here, how we can do this one? 20% of D. So, which is equal to 
1 by 6 into 48 which is equal to 8. Then what is this D? So this is 8 divided by 20 into 100 here. So which is equal to 40. Here distance in kilometer therefore we can express it as 40 kilometer. So like this way we can catch. Oh, once you are familiar with the concept, you just try to catch the answer of this type of a question from the options. That's a very uh, tricky or the smart approach in this types of oral questions because here we have the options, uh, those are the actual distance here. So you can verify it, which distance will give this kind of a difference, could it? Oh, that is 20% of which value divided by 48 will be equal to 1 by 6. So that's a very simple tricky approaching style. And consider this question, a rectangle sheet of metal is 40 centimeter and 15 centimeter. Its measures are 40 centimeter and 15 centimeter. So while we are considering a rectangular sheet, correct? So a rectangular sheet. So if you are considering like this. So this is 40 centimeter and 15 centimeter. Here this is 40 and this is 15. 15 centimeters. So, in this diagram, if we are cutting the corners with 4 centimeters each, so if you are cancelling, cutting the corners with 4 centimeters each, so we can cut it like this, this is 4, this is 4, Got it? So, here also it will be like that. So, here this corner another 4, 4, this corner another 4, 4, Got it? So, this is the cutting process here. Uh, we are folding them, we are removing these corner pieces of coils. So then what will happen whenever we are considering, so this particular figure or we are framing that as a keyboard, as a keyboard, what is this length? This we have to consider, this find this one. So if you are considering this length, how it will be? So this is 40 divided by 4 minus 4. So 40 minus, 40 minus 8 which is equal to 32 centimeter. What about this portion? 32 centimeter means this portion. Clear? So what about this portion? So this is 15 minus 4 minus 4. So that is 15 minus 8. So 15 minus 8 that's equal to 7 centimeter. So this is 7, 7. Got it. So while we are considering such a keyboard, such a keyboard. So if you are framing this as a keyboard here, so then how it will become? I just roughly, roughly draw this one, roughly draw this one. So consider this a situation, this way. Here this measure is 7, this measure is 15 and this height is 4. Got it? So this is 32, not 15, that is 32. So here this is 32 and this one is 4. So if you need to find out the volume of such keyboard, so here once we are considering this keyboard, this keyboard, its length that is 32 centimeter, its breadth uh, that is 7 centimeter and its height so that is 4 centimeter. So then we are going to find out the volume that is length into breadth into height. So here this is 32 into 7 into 4. So whenever we are multiplying these values, this is 7 into 4. So that is 28. 28 into 32, we are sure that will end in 6. So but we have to multiply it. So this is 32 into 28. So what is the value here? 32 into 28 here. So this is 2 into 8, 16. 1 is there. 24 plus 1, 25 here. This is 64. Therefore, this is 896. So here the answer is 896 centimeter cube. So this is the answer. Got it. So that's a simple geometrical understanding. From this diagram we have to consider which will be the length and breadth of the figure. Based on that figure we have to find or apply this result for finding the answer. Next question. Distance between two stations A and B is 778 kilometer. A train covers the journey from A to B at 84 kilometer per hour 
and returns back A with a uniform speed of 56 km per hour. Find the average speed of the train during the whole journey. That's a tricky, interesting question. So while we are considering such type of a question, we just consider a distance here. So it's based on a basic result. So here are two points A and B. If a person travels from A to B at P kilometer per hour and the return journey at Q kilometer per hour. Understand, it's irrespective of the data, the distance between these two points. At any data, if you need to find out the average speed, average speed in such a situation, so that's a to and fro journey to and fro journey. So this average speed is nothing but 2pq divided by p plus q. It's a standard result. 2pq divided by p plus q. So I believe the standard result here. So in this case, here, what, which are the speeds here? So that is 84 km per hour and 56 km per hour. This is 84 km per hour and this is 56 km per hour. Per hour. So how we can apply it? Just apply it, just multiply the values here. So this is 2 into 84 into 56 divided by 84 plus 56. In such type of operations, never multiply these values even in the first step itself. First of all, you have to add the denominators together. You have to develop some basic ideas about the simplification. Here this will be 2 into 84 into 56 divided by the denominator, so that is 140. Here we know that 14, 14 into 4 will be equal to 56. Keep the 10 uh, in the form of 10 itself because here our answers and the decimal form. So just multiply the numerator together. So this is 8 into 84. So 2 into 4, that is 8, 8 into 84. So 8 into 4, 32, 3 is there. 8 into 8, 64 plus 3, 67. So by 10, therefore the answer is 67.2 kilometer per hour. So that is the answer here. Understand, the 778 kilometer is an irrelevant data in such a question. So actually with the help of that 778 also you can find the answer. But without that distance also, we can find uh, through this direct result, whenever we are considering such type of uh, average speed, in the case of a to and fro journey, to and fro journey in the sense, here the distances are same. So from A to B, then B to A, the distances are same. In such a situation, we can directly apply this result. Okay, then we can consider the next question. Yeah, it's a very beautiful time and work question. It's a bit tricky. Here, uh, lots of connectivities. That means the efficiency-wise relationships. So based on this efficiency-wise relationships, we have to catch the answer of this type of a question. You can do a certain work in the same time which B and C together can do it. So from the first statement, what we can say? Efficiency of A equal to efficiency of B and C. We can write it like this. That means this person A, his efficiency is same as the sum of the efficiencies of B and C. In short, we can write it like this. Got it? And what is the second statement? If A and B together could do it in 10 days, B and C alone in 15 days. So that's another statement here, but there are the connections like this, A and B together in 10 days, C alone in 50 days. So understand the differences in these two expressions. Here in the first expression, I just converted that as an equation by using the equal sign. There we equate the efficiencies of these persons. The efficiency of A is same as the combined efficiency of B and C. But in this place, we are considering this is efficiency and this is time. That means A and B, two persons. 
They took out the required 10 days. C required 50 days. So therefore, what we can conclude? So we know that product of these two values should be equal to product of these two values. That's the basic idea of time and work. This many persons require 10 days. So that means the number of persons into number of days will be equal to the another group. The, the number of persons into number of days. So by equating them, so that is 10 into A plus B, which is equal to 50 into C. So we can cancel like this. Okay, here we got one time of A plus B equal to 5C. So therefore, here we can write this one, A plus B, which is equal to 5C. So what you can do here, instead of this A, you can substitute this value here. So what is this A? In terms of B, we can express that as B plus C. This A we can express as B plus C plus B, so which is equal to 5C. Or oh, what's the connection here? This is 2B plus C is equal to 5C. 2B plus C. 2B plus C. So that is 5C. Or what we can conclude? 2B equal to 4C. So that's a very important relationship between B and C. So how we can conclude here? The efficiency of B and C will be like this. B is twice C. B is twice C. So if B is efficiency, efficiency of B is twice that of C, and C required 50 days, then in how many days B can complete it? That's a simple logic. Here the efficiency of B is twice that of C. Then if C required 50 days, the number of days B required, that is exactly half of the number of days that C required. Therefore, here this is 25 days. Clear? Understand that concept? That's based on this comparison. So from this arrangement, we are reaching such a type of conclusion we are reaching the final conclusion that the efficiency of B is twice that of C. So that's a simple logic. You just think about it. If I am twice efficient as uh, uh, I am twice as efficient as you, then and you can complete the work in 50 days, then I can complete it in 25 days. It's so like that. That's a simple logic. So that we are applying here. So that's a tricky and uh, much more challenging type of question. So based on all the basic ideas of time and work, it's comparison of efficiencies. So we can move to the next question. If selling price of an article is 4 by 3, selling price of an article is 4 by 3 of its cost price. We are going to find out the profit percentage. What you can do, we can take this cost price towards denominator. This is selling price by cost price, that is 4 by 3. Understand, cost price is 3, selling price is 4. So here we are connecting it like this. This cost price is 3, selling price is 4. We are assuming like this. If the values like this cost price and selling prices, then what is profit? This increase is profit. So here an increase of 1. So therefore, what is profit percent? Then usually, which way we are finding profit percentage? This profit is what percent of cost price? So that's the step, understand? The denominator should be the cost price. So here, what is 1 by 3? Once we are observing this value, immediately we will get the idea. What is 1 by 3? 1 by 3 is nothing but 33 and 1 by 3 percent. Here, the percentage of profit is 33 and 1 by 3 percent. Then the next question, 5 mangoes and 4 oranges cost as much as 3 mangoes and 7 oranges. So here we just consider price of mango price of a mango so that we can assume as x and price of oranges so that is y so either you can put the values as x and m and o itself but this all will make some confusion so you may misinterpret with o and zero for that purpose we are considering x and y it is given that five mangoes five mangoes and four oranges. So that is same as, as much as three mangoes and seven oranges. So this is a simple equation 
with the two variables. So we can connect it, take this x towards left side and that in this is 2x and y towards right side, that is 3y. So here we, are, here we are going to find out what is the ratio of the cost of one mango and the cost of orange. Okay, here then we can write this is x by y which is equal to 3 by 2, clear? That is 3 by 2. So then what we are going to find out the same, the prices are in which ratio, therefore x is to y x is to y. So, that is equal to 3 is to 2. Therefore, this is the answer. Clear? That is the answer. Then the next question, if a sum doubles in 16 years, how much will it be in 8 years? So, that is a plain question. So, while reading such a question, do you have any idea? So, under which type of percent means uh, interest calculation here? So, whether it is simple interest or compound interest? Anybody have any doubt like that? So, if any question, it's not mentioning whether it's simple interest or compound interest. By default, that's the case of simple interest. Therefore, here we are considering this is a simple interest situation. As sum doubles in 16 years, we just consider we put rupees 100. It becomes 200 in how many years? In 16 years. Clear? So then we just consider what is the increase occurred here. During this 16 years period, it is increased by rupees 100. It is increased by rupees 100. So we just consider the similar situation and similar situation or similar rate calculation. So how many years here? In 8 years. In 8 years. So here we got in 16 years. The interest recurrent that is rupees 100. Therefore, in 8 years, what will be the interest will going to recurrent here? So, that is exactly half of this value. Got it. In 16 years, the total interest received that is 100, therefore, it is exactly half period that is 50 rupee. Therefore, this 100 it become, this 100 it become rupees 150. Rupees 150. Clear? If this 100 becomes rupees 150, this is how many times? That is exactly one and a half times of the principal. So that is exactly one and a half times. That's a simple logic. Okay, then move to the next question. The simple interest for six years be equal to 30% of the principal. It will be equal to the principal after how many years? So. 30% of the principal occurred in 6 years. So, simple interest, so that as 30% of the principal, it is occurred in 6 years. Then, when the simple interest become 100% of the principal, so that is a logic. So, it will be equal to the principal. So that means the principal itself in the sense that means it should be 100% of the principal. So that is a simple connection unitary type of method. This 30 is 6. Then 100 is how much? So here we know that 30 divided by 5 will be equal to 6. So 30 divided by 5 that is equal to 6. So here also 100 divided by 5. That kind of a unitary relationship you can catch in such a situation. So this is equal to 20 years. Don't forget here, this is 100 divided by 5, that is equal to 20 years. Through this way, we can catch the answer of this type of questions easily, instead of considering any type of algebraic or the result-wise approach. Therefore, you have to practice it like this, so then we can do it by mind whenever we are doing the or attending the exam. So, we can approach the question like this way. The perimeters of a square and a regular hexagon are equal. The ratio of the hexagon to the area of the square is. So here we just consider how we can assume these values. Here the perimeters of a square and a regular hexagon are equal. So here we know that a regular hexagon it has exactly six sides. So how we can draw a regular hexagon here? So if you are going to draw a regular hexagon, so it will be like this.
So, if you are drawing a regular hexagon, it will be almost like this. This is a regular hexagon. And we are constrained it in the form of a square. So, what I am going to do, so here the side of this regular hexagon, I am constraining that as 2 units, 2 centimeter we can consider, got it. So, therefore, here this is side of hexagon. So, this is a regular hexagon, side of regular hexagon. So, we are assuming that as 2 centimeter and here it is given that the perimeter of hexagon and the square are equal. Therefore, the perimeter, so which is 6 times of 2, which is 12 centimeter. So, therefore, the side of square, side of square. So, how to find out the perimeter of a square that is 4 times of the side therefore, this is 12 by 4, so which is equal to 3 centimeter, that is the side of the square. Then we are equating or we are considering the ratio between the areas of hexagon and area of a square. So, how to find out the area of hexagon? So, area of hexagon. So, we know that this is 6 times the area of each equilateral triangle. So, while we are considering the equilateral triangle here, so this is one equilateral triangle, such 6 equilateral triangles here. So, 6 times of the areas of equilateral triangles, what is the ratio to find out the area of equilateral triangles? So that is root 3 by 4 a square. Here, a square is 2 square. Or simply, this is 6 root 3 square centimeter. Then, what is the area of square? As we know, area of the square is nothing but the square of the side. So, that is 3 square, which is equal to 9. Hence, the required ratio. Therefore, the ratio here, so ratio that is 6 root 3 is to 9. So, what is the 6 root 3 is to 9 here? So, while we are simplifying this one, this is equal to 3 root 3. So, here we are dividing both the values by 3, then this will be 2 root 3 is to 3. So, this is the answer. 2 root 3 is to C. Look at the options here. So, therefore, the final answer is 2 root 3 is to 3. So, here you have to understand this kind of a relationship and it is a result wise approach. You have to make a clarity about or you have to by heart the result related to hexagon. And here we know that the regular hexagon is formed by joining 6 equilateral triangle. So, here each equilateral triangle its area is root 3 by 4 a square like that we have to consider. So, it is based on our initial assumption. So, you can start the assumption with any value, 2, 1 or any value. Here, if we are considering the perimeter of the square, so that sum should be divisible by 4. For that purpose only, I just consider 2 as the side of this hexagon. Otherwise, what will happen if you are starting our assumption like that is 1 unit, that is the side of this regular hexagon, this total will be equal to 6. So, that one will be divisible by 4 then you have to do the rest of the operations with a fractional value. For avoiding such kind of complexities, we can consider a suitable value as a side of this regular hexagon. Then the next question, if the height of a right circular cone is increased by 200 percent and the radius of the base is reduced by 50 percent and the volume of the cone. So, first of all, we have to consider. So, what is a right circular cone and how to find out the volume here. So, if you are considering a right circular cone like this, so this is a right circular cone. So, this is its base radius and this is the height. Correct. So, what is the volume of a right circular cone? So, that is 1 by 3 pi r square h. 1 by 3 pi r square h. So, I will teach you, so what is the easiest way 
to reach the conclusion of such type of question instead of considering the exact assumptions. Here you are simply considering radius, height, then 1 by 3 pi r square h. Only you have to consider this r square h because 1 by 3 pi is a constant value. What you can consider? It is given that height is increased by 200 percent. That means initially that is 100. If it is increased by 200 percent, it becomes 3 times. So that means a 2 times increase here, it is become 3 times. So this asks the initial situation, this asks the initial situation, this asks the final situation. Either you can apply this method or we can consider the percentage wise relationship also, but this is quite convenient one. And the radius of the base is reduced by uh, 50 percent. Here actually this value, this, this one, so this one is height. Therefore, we have to assume initial height as 1 and the final height as 3 because this height is increased by 200 percent. That means it's become, it's uh, increased by 2 times of the initial value. That's the simple meaning of 200 percent increase. It becomes 3. And its base radius is reduced by 50 percent. That means initially that as 1. So now it is 1. It's exactly half of the initial 1. What is this r square h? We just consider. What is this r square h? This is 2 square into 1, which is equal to 4. Here, what is this r square h? This is 1 square into 3, which is 3. So, for considering the percentage variation, we can avoid this ratio, means constant values. Thus, 1 by 3 pi is commonly applicable on these two values. From here, we have to catch what is the variation in volume. This is the initial volume, this is the final volume from here to here. What happened? There is a decrease of 1 out of 4. So therefore, the percentage of variation, so the percentage of variation in volume, in volume, so that is nothing but 1 by 4 into 100 percent decrease. So that much decrease here. What is 1 by 4 into 100 percent decrease? That is 25 percent decrease. So this is the conclusion here. So this is 25 percent decrease. Okay, then the next question. 70 square is subtracted from the square of a number. The answer is obtained is 1, 2, 3, 2. What is the number? 70 square is subtracted from the square of a number. So then the result is 1, 2, 3, 2. We assumed that number as x, then x square minus 70 square, that is 1, 2, 3, 2. So that's a major requirement. Whenever we are considering that type of a question, first of all, you will be able to uh, frame that as an equation, algebraic x equation. That skill is called algebraic translation. From the given data, you have to frame this kind of relationship with. Uh, based on the algebraic expression. Therefore, we can easily connect it. This is x square. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 2 plus what is 17 square? So, it's equal to 289. 289. Just add these values together. 9 plus 2, that's equal to 11. 1 is there. 9 plus 3, 12. 1 is there. 5. So, this is 1, 5, 2, 1. Can you guys? which is the square root of this number or from the given set of options you can easily catch which value square will end with this one that's a simple logic simply consider this unit digit so here 6 square that will end in 6 2 square 4 7 square 9 only this 9 square therefore what we can conclude here here this is equal to x square equal to this value, therefore x is equal to 39. Therefore, we are going to find out the value of such number. We got that number as 39. The next question, Ria did a mathematics test with a different design. Each correct answer scored 8 marks and each incorrect answer reduced the score by 4 marks. The test contains 30 questions and after completing, Biba had a score of 0. How many questions did the answer correctly? Here, a total of 30 questions. So, we just consider how many correct answers, how many wrong answers. 
So we are going to find out the number of correct entries. So suppose the number of correct entries as x, what is the number of wrong entries? That is 30 minus x. And what is the score for each correct answer? That is 8. So what is the score for each wrong answer? That is 4 for deducting here. Therefore, we can combine it. This is 8x minus 4 into 30 minus x will be equal to 0. So that's the simple logic. Therefore, this is 8x and this is minus of minus x which will be equal to 4x. So take this 120 towards right side that is 120. So this is 12x equal to 120 hence x is equal to 10. Simple, simple. So we got the answer that is equal to 10. Either you can do the operation with the help of this algebraic operation that itself is an easy method or you can catch it through the substitution. Oh, think about, we already learned the concept of allegation in some of the questions. You just try to think about the situation, whether the allegation is applicable in similar type of a situation, if it is applicable, in which way we can apply it, could it? So here we can move to the next question. What is the 101st term of the sequence 1, 4, 7, 10, etc.? So which type of a sequence it is? So while observing the nature of that sequence, immediately we will get the idea it's an arithmetic progression. So here it is an arithmetic progression. So that is 1, 4, 7, 10, etc. So what is the first term here? That is 1. What is the common difference here? So common difference. Here each term we are adding 3 to each term. That is 3. So we are going to find out it's one not first term. So what is the relationship here? If we need to find out the nth term of an arithmetic progression, that is a plus, that means the first term plus n minus 1 into d. Here you are, if you need to find out one not first term, here a plus n minus 1, that is one not 1 minus 1 into d, here d is 3. So here we got this is 1 plus 101 minus 1 that is 100 into 3. So which is equal to 301. Got it. So therefore the answer is option 3. Then the next question. A family has 150 pets. Of these 60 are cats and 30 are dogs and the rest are fishes. So here total 150 pets. Got it. 150 pets. So we just classify them into 3. Here classify them into 3. The first one 60 cats. So here 60 cats and 30 dogs. So while observing these two values here we got the idea that some of these two values that will be equal to 90. So what is the remaining quantity here? That is 60. So here 60 fishes. Good. So here what we are going to find out, what will be the ratio of fishes to dogs? So fishes to dogs, we are going to find out. So fishes to dogs. What is the number of fishes here? 60. Number of dogs here? 30. So this is simply 2 is to 1. That is a very simple approach, 2 is to 1. Very simple question. Understand that order, that is only the important point. It's a very simple arithmetic uh, or the data interpretation type question. Here, the given pie chart gives the marks scored by the students in different subjects. So these are marks. And in an examination, the total marks obtained for the examination is 360. If the total marks is 360, that itself representing the degree measures. Here we know that the total central angle of a circle that has 360 degree. The difference of marks between English and science is same as between. So consider these two areas, English and science. So the difference between the marks, English and not social science, science, English and science, is same as between. So here we know that science is more than English, therefore this is science minus English so how much it is? Science, it is 80. 
and English it is 55. So what is the difference here? This is 25. This difference is same with which two subjects? Suppose we just consider the social science and English, what will happen? Social science is 65, English is 55. So this is 65 minus 55. So which is equal to 10. That's not matching, therefore this is not the answer. Hindi and social science. So Hindi is 70, social science is 65. So here this is 70 minus 65. So that's equal to 5. This is also not the answer. And the next one that is English and Hindi. So Hindi, so that is 70, English 55. So what's the difference here? This is 15. That's also not equal to 25. Therefore, we are sure the last one is the answer. Here, mathematics and social science. Mathematics, that is 90. And social science, that is 65. So this is equal to 25. We got the correct actual difference here. So that's equal to option 4. So it's, it's not mandatory that you have to check all the options like this. You just simply observe the set of values. Here we got this difference is equal to 25. So out of this set of values, and the other thing we have to consider. So which pair will make the same difference of 25 again? So like that we have to consider. So through that way also you can reach the conclusion of such a type of question instead of doing these types of NDR testing like this way. So next a tricky question from the area of fractions. Which part contains the fractions in ascending order? Here we have three fractions. So which are the fractions here? So 11 by 14 and 16 by 19 and this is 19 by 21. So whenever we are considering such type of fractions, so which type of fractions these are? So these are, these are proper fractions. These are proper fractions. Got it? First of all, you have to understand this idea, proper fractions. So if we are considering the difference between the numerator and denominator in this fraction, so that is 3. So this denominator is 3 more than the numerator. Here also this is 3. But here it is 2 only. So therefore what I am going to consider. So I am considering corresponding fraction here that is 18 by 21. So here the difference is 3. So what you can say about 18 by 21 and 90 by 21 which is greater? Definitely this 90 by 21 is greater. Sure? Yes. So then. If we are considering a set of proper fractions and there is a common difference between numerator and denominator, there is a common difference. It's a tricky comparison method. There is a common difference between numerator and denominator. Then what we can conclude? The least fraction contains the least values, least values in the sense least numerator and least denominator. So therefore, so the conclusion will be like this, least fraction contains least values, least values. Similarly, the largest fraction contains the largest values as usual. Here while we are considering this fractions, so out of these fractions here the difference is same. Therefore, the least value contains in the first one. Therefore, what we can conclude, this is 11 by 14 is less than 16 by 9. That is again less than 18 by 21. Instead of 18 by 21, this 19 by 21 is greater than 18 by 21. Therefore, no doubt, this is 19 by 21. So, therefore, this is the order if you are arranging the in ascending order. Ascending order means from least to largest. Therefore, that is our option one. So this is an easy, tricky way of comparison of fractions. So we can move to our final question here. Which of the following fractions is between, lies between 2 by 3 and 3 by 4? Another tricky question from the area of fractions. How we can compare or how we can identify the given set of fractions, which fraction lies in between these two fractional values. Here, 
we just consider 2 by 3 and 3 by 5. So, if we are converting these values with the common denominator, what you can do? So, here while observing the denominators, we got the idea 3 and 5, the LCM is 15. So, therefore, I am multiplying this fractions, numerator and denominator by 5 and this fractions, numerator and denominator by 3. So, therefore, here we will get this is 10 by 15 and this is 9 by 15, clear? So, our answer should lie in between these two values. So, if we need to compare these values, here we just consider the first option, that first option, so that is 2 by 5. So, that is our first option. If you are converting it in the form of the denominator as 15, what you can do? Here we just can multiply the numerator and denominator by 3, this will be equal to 6, 15, 6 by 15. So, can we conclude this 6 by 15 is lying between this 9 by 15 and 10 by 15, which here which is greater. So, here the least value is 9 by 50. So, answer should lie between this range, this is 10 by 50, clear? So, therefore, the 6 by 15 is less than this value, therefore, this is not the answer. Here, if you are arranging this one, so where the position of 6 by 15, 6 by 15 is here, not here, right? Therefore, that is not the answer. Then the second option, that is 1 by 3, multiply the numerator and denominator by 5. So, then how it will become? This is equal to 5 by 15. So, what happened? It is again behind this value. So, this is 5 by 15. So, that is again not inside that range. Therefore, that is also not the answer. So, this is not the answer. This is not the answer. By considering that 1 by 15, that is again below this value. So, therefore, that is also not the answer. Therefore, what we can conclude? 31 by 50 will be the answer. That we do not want to do the verifications. We are sure 31 by 50 will be the answer. So, here we do not want to verify this thing so, uh, because that is a wastage of time. There is not any none of this option or cannot be determined option. We are sure rest to 3 are not satisfying. Therefore, this value will lie in between these two quantities. Clear? So, that is the simple tricky approaching style towards this type of question. So, these are the 25 questions. So, from here also you learned some of the tricky approaching styles and you got some of the ideas or guidelines or indications uh, in which or which area you have to prepare more or in which areas you are facing difficulties. So, these are all the things you have to analyze through such a type of mock exam and you have to analyze your strategical approaching styles, whether you have a strong strategical method to tackle such an exam. So, otherwise you have to develop it. So, whether you have a time management system or a question management system. So, these are all the things we have to analyze properly. And you have to create such a one and whenever we are attending, you are attending the next mock exam, you just try to employ this uh, time management or the question management method. And you have to check the success rate of such type of strategical approaching styles. How we all can do it well, right now we can wind up. Thank you. Welcome back to the Logical Reasoning. We have another set of questions ready for us. Let's go with it. Here it is. First question, after walking 6 kilometers, I turn to the right. So, it is, seems like a direction sense question. So, after walking 6 kilometers, I turn right. Well, after walking 6 kilometers, to which direction? Not given. So, after walking 6 kilometers, I turn to the right and then walk 2 kilometers. Then I turn to the left and walk 10 kilometers. In the end, I was moving towards the west. So, from which direction did I start my journey? So, you can take it in different ways. Let's say this person started moving towards north. That's one possibility. Or you can take that person and started moving towards east. That's another possibility. So, we are not really sure about it. So, we may take one of this possibility, either this possibility or this possibility. If both of these possibilities do not work, we'll go for the third possibility. That means, 
This is towards north. The first movement is towards north. This is first movement is towards east. Then the next possibility, the first movement towards south. And the next possibility, the first movement towards west. So we need to take all these possibilities until we get the answer. So let's start from the north. After walking six kilometers, so this is pretty much six kilometers. Start, this is the starting point. I turn right, so this is the right. And well, then walk two kilometers. After turning right, this person walked what? Two kilometers. Now that person is facing east. Then I turn to the left, and this is what? Left. And walked what? 10 kilometers. This is 10 kilometers. In the end, I was moving towards the west. In the end, I was moving towards the west. Okay, so this is what? After walking six kilometers, I turned to the right, then walked two kilometers. Then I turned to the left and walked 10 kilometers. In the end, I was moving towards the west. So from which direction did I start my journey? So this case, finally, this person is facing what? North started the journey facing north and now this person is facing north as well so what we need is what west correct and the end i was moving towards the west so this case this person was moving towards north and finally he was facing north so towards the west what we can do it maybe this person started the journey towards west we'll take that possibility let's see what happens this person started moving towards west first, that's for six kilometers. So after walking six kilometers, so this person was facing west and he walked that same direction, six kilometers. Then I turned to the right, from this point turned to the right. So that is two kilometers. Then I turned to the left, from here turned to the left. So this is this direction and walk 10 kilometers now finally this person is facing west i was moving towards west so that means this person started his journey from this point which direction he was facing at the beginning from which direction did i start my journey this person was facing or this question is a bit confusing so you can uh, reframe that question or like you can challenge that question if you don't really get what exactly they mean by that question. Actually, the meaning of this question, from which direction did I start my journey, means at the beginning, at the beginning, which direction was this person facing? Beginning, which direction was the person facing? So in the beginning, the person was facing the west. Now he is facing west as well. However, that is the answer. So the beginning he was facing what? West. However, if they ask you the question, with respect to the starting point, this is the starting point. Which direction he is at this point of time? After this moment, which direction he is? So with respect to that point, when you look at that, with respect to the starting point, where is he now? towards north at the same time towards west as well so well from the starting point with respect to the starting point this person is what this is north right this is the starting point so north and uh, e west so this person is somewhere between north and west so that means northwest with respect to this point but that is not the question the question was asking for us to find out at the beginning, which direction this person was facing? This person was facing west. At the end, he is facing west. And the beginning, he must be facing west. So that is the answer. Number 27. So Mr. Hanish leaves for office from his house. He walks 20 meters towards north, followed by 10 meters to the east. Then he walks 35 meters towards the south and further 5 meters towards the west. Then he turns towards north and walks 26 meters. What is the straight distance in meters between his initial and final positions? So we'll take a look at that. First of all, we draw a diagram. 
So he started moving from a, from leaves for his office. Starting point is what? His home. He walks 20 meters towards north. So he started, let's say he started from here, 20 meters towards north. It's 20 meters towards north. So that's 20 meters. The followed by 10 meters to the east. So 10 meters to the east. Then he walks 35 meters to the south. 35 meters to the south. This is south direction. 35 meters. So he reached here. So this total distance is what? 35 meters. Let's mark it. Thirty-five. At the same time, we know that you know what up to this point, this is twenty, right? So this part is twenty as well, and the balance is what total thirty-five. Balance is what fifteen. Thirty-five meters towards south, and further five meters towards the west. So five meters towards the west. So from this point, five meters towards the west. This is what five meters. So now he's facing this direction. Oh, sorry, five meters towards the west. What I have marked is east. So five meters towards the west. This is five. Then he turns towards the north and walks 26 meters. From here, he turns towards north 26 meters. So 26 meters up to here, it's 15, right? So this is 15, so this is 15. And from this point, 15 plus how much is 26? 15 plus? 11 from some from this point 11 meters more so this is 11 so what is the straight distance in meters between his initial and final position so this is the initial position starting point initial position and this is the final position so what is that distance Let me draw it. So that's that's a right angle triangle we have. We need to find the hypotenuse of this triangle that will give you the distance between initial and final positions. So this height is 11 and this total is 10. This part is 5. So this is 5, balance is 5. So ultimately what you get is root of, in order to that this hypotenuse, height and base right so that is base square plus height square 121 plus 25 that is 146 121 11 square 121 plus 25 so 146 146 that is it's equal to root of 146 that is approximately equal to what 12 that is what the question so the answer we have 12 it's 12 point something, but we have the best answer we have given among the answer choice is 12. So we'll go for that answer. Number 28. Brick is to wall. So brick and wall. What's the connection here? Brick is to wall. Dash is to shirt. I think uh, we have taken a look at this part right earlier. Brick and wall. What is the connection? Brick is the raw material used to build the wall. And dash is to shirt. What is the shirt? I think last time we have discussed pot clay is to pottery. Clay is used to make pottery. So clay is the raw material for pottery. Here we have shirt. What? What is the answer for that? Is it like button? Is it like collar? Is it like fabric? Is it like sleeve? So what is the connection? Brick is the raw material for wall. And what would be the raw material for shirt? Is it like button? Is it like collar? Is it like fabric? Is it like sleeve? Button, well, we use buttons on the shirt, but is that a raw material for the shirt? Not really, that is okay. It is, well, it's a supplementary material, of course. And collar, is that the raw material for the shirt? Fabric? Yes, right. Fabric is used to make the shirt. 
Okay, so that answer, the best answer we can have here, fabric. The other things are like the parts of the shirt, button, collar, sleeve, all those things are the material or the kind of items which can be, which is used in, the, in making a shirt. Sometimes you may have questions like, let's say, fan. Fan is to blade. Fan is to blade. What is the connection? And if they ask you the question, shirt is to what? In that context, if they ask, shirt is to what? The fan is to blade. What is it blade? Is it like blade we used to shave or is it some other meaning? The blade, they mean in this case, you have to assume that fan and blade, well, shaving blade and fan doesn't have any connection, right? Any logical connection. Either you take it that way, there's no connection at all, then, then shirt and we have to find an object which is not really connected with the shirt from the answer choices. That's one of the way. Another way, fan and blade. Blade is what? The leaf of the fan is known as the blade. The fan and the blade. Blade is a component of the fan. Same way, shirt and what? That case, if you have the answer choice buttons or button, that's correct. That's one of the component of the shirt. So that is the case. The answer could be button. But in this case, the fabric. Fabric is the raw material, not the buttons. Now, carpenter is to sew. Carpenter and sew, what is the connection? Professional and tool. If professional and tool, then sculpture and what? Sculpture and knife brush, table, chisel, which is the answer. Knife is used by the chef and brush is used by the painter and table is used by who? Well, it could be any person who is like office assistant, clerk, all those people, they use the table and chisel. Chisel is used by the, the sculpture, so that's the answer. And we have many more items in this category, like uh, some of those items we have discussed earlier. Uh, we'll take a look at some of those items now. For example, like a soldier. Soldier is to what? Warrior. It's pretty much a reminder of some of the items we have discussed. And there could be a new items as well. Plumber. What is the tool of the plumber? Mechanic. Electrician, teacher, well, doctor, what is the tool of the doctor, surgeon, and who else, the normal people we meet on like almost on everyday basis. There are our professionals and they have tools as well, right? So farmer, we may see this farmer almost every day. What's the tool of the farmer? And of course, we have taken that chef as well. If you eat food if from a hotel, a person is called chef. And in your own kitchen, probably it is any one of you or maybe a parent, whoever it is. So that's uh, tools, professionals and tools. And we have many more, right? Painter, painter is brush. Now, soldier, what is the tool of the soldier? Soldier is gun. If soldier is gun, what it is what? What it is sword. And if that case, what's the tool of the police officer? Police officer. Police officer is supposed to use the cane, not the gun, but the cane. And plumber, plumber is what kind of tool he use? The person who repairs pipes and all those kind, installs pipe fittings, that person is plumber. And what is his tool? His tool is a wrench, pipe wrench. And mechanic, spanner. Electrician, tester. And teacher, what is the tool of the teacher? Chalk. Doctor, 
stethoscope. Surgeon, scalpel. Scalpel, actually it is a blade, which is surgical blade. That is something we he used in surgery. So scalpel. And farmer, what is the tool of the farmer? Plow. And painter, brush. Police officer, cane. So this is how we kind of like review the stuff we have uh, uh, discussed earlier and some of the items probably it is a new stuff for you as well. So sometimes you may have questions connected with any of this. Doctor may be given then they may ask what is the tool of the plumber. And sometimes mechanic is given and they may ask what is the tool of the surgeon. So those kind of things are there. Uh, what is the tool of the nurse? Nurse, what is the tool? Well, syringe. Syringe is uh, usually that is what the tool used by the nurse. Or it could be instead of syringe, if the thermometer is given. Thermometer is not really a tool, but it's an instrument which is used to measure something, right? Okay, but nurse uses it. Anyhow, so these are the items which comes under the category professionals and tools. Now, this is pretty much a lecture series type question however the series a slight difference from what we have done earlier this is a repetition letter series that means see that some blanks are here and when you look at the answer choices the answer choices are like a b b a i mean a b b b a and sec third answer choice b a a b b and second answer choice a b b a b so that means this blanks the letter is that's supposed to come at the point of this blanks, it's supposed to be like either A or B. So ultimately, the series will be only two different letters, only two letters, that's A and B. However, that A and B could be in some kind of a pattern. So what is a pattern here? This first question is straightforward, simple question. What is it? A, B. Next, uh, if you take it as A, B. Next, this one you can take it as AB. So naturally, this one you can take it as AB as well. So AB, 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 next AB, right? So which are the missing letters? AB, B, AB. So AB, B, AB. So this is the answer. AB, B, AB. Next, a similar type of question. In this case, you have A, B, C, then some blanks, A, a blank, then B, B, after B, a blank, then C, and then you have some more blanks there. And then when you look at the answer choices, what you see here, the letters in the answer choices are A, B, C, D, E, etc. And if you look at third answer choice, you have B, C, D, E, etc. Then if you look at second answer choice, B, B, C, C, D, E, E, etc. So that means this and I mean the series, it has letters A, then B, C, D, D, E, etc. So this pretty much, you know what, a series of the letters from A to E in some order or the other order. So how do we find that pattern? A, this is B, so what is here? AAB or ABB. So AAB, oh, oh, AABB, how about CC, DD? And here again, what do you have? If it is AABB, CC, DD, the next one must be EE. -E. But here it's D. So that pattern doesn't work. What else you have? I'm pretty sure at least some of you have find that pattern by this time. What is it? A, how about we take B here? A, B, B. If A, B, B, then how about C, C? 1 A, 2 Bs, 2 Cs. Well, 2 Ds. Then what is here? That must be 3 Cs. Well, if it is 1 A, 2 Bs, 3 Cs. That means 4 Ds, 1, 2, 3, 4 Ds, 
so a1 b is 2 c is 3 d is 4 then e must be 5 so it's 1 2 3 4 5 yeah 5 e's so it looks like that's a that's a pattern now so what are the letters missing b c c how many answer choices b c c this one is b c c so this is out so b c c d d d d triple e yes that's the answer number 32 Karen is 11th from the left and Manchu is 9th from the right in a row of girls. If 5 girls are between Karen and Manchu, then how many girls are in the row? Let's try that question. This is a common type of question for every entrance exam. So what we have, Karen is 11th from the left. So Karen is 11th from the left. So Karen is 11th from the left. So there are certain number of persons to the left of Karen. How many are there? If Karen is 11th from the left, then there are 10 persons to the left of Karen. And how about the other person? Manchu. Manchu is 9th from the right. So Manchu, Manchu is 9th from the right. So that means on her right, there are a certain number of persons. How many are on the right of Manchu? There are 8 persons on the right of Manchu. So Karen is 11th from the left, 10, per, 10 persons to the left of Karen. And Manchu is 9th from the right, so 8 persons to the right of Manchu. And if 5 girls are between Karen and Manchu, so there are 5 girls between Karen and Manchu, 5. Then how many girls are in the row? If that's the case, how many girls are in the row? So this is a row of girls. We have Karen, we have Manchu, and what is the question? How many girls are in the row? From the left, left up to here is 11. From the right up to here is 9. 11 plus 9 is 20, plus 5, 25. So the answer is 25. Seems like a straightforward question, right? So 25, we have the answer choice right here. But before you finalize the answer, just look at the other answer choices as well. So 25, 21, 13, and we have an answer choice cannot be determined. Cannot be determined. There is a space in between, it's supposed to be space in between, cannot be determined. So if we have cannot be determined, what does that indicate? Cannot be determined indicates a possibility of a second answer choice cannot be determined means if there are like more than one answer choice then we cannot say which one is the correct answer exact answer that's a situation we use cannot be determined or data inadequate in this case we don't have the answer choice data inadequate but what we have given to us it's cannot be determined so since this cannot be determined is given as an answer choice it doesn't mean that cannot be determined is the answer always however that is our responsibility to check is there a second possibility of or not since we have such an answer choice here so let's check it out is there a second possibility so if there is a second possibility what would be the possibility we have to keep all the conditions given right so what are the conditions given to us karen must be 11th from the left and manchu must be 9th from the right and there must be five girls in between them. Five girls. So then how many girls are there in the row? This is a row of girls. Now, you know what? We have to keep all the conditions given. At the same time, among the conditions, it doesn't say that Karen is to the left of Manchu or Manchu is to the right of Karen. Karen must be 11th from the left. That is, that's okay. However, this Manchu can be to the left of Karen. Is that possible? Manchu can be somewhere here left of Karen and between Karen and Manchu there are five persons. Have you ever thought about such a possibility? So let's look at that. Manchu is here and let's say Karen is here. In between them we cannot change those conditions. That conditions we keep as it is. So five in between them 
at the same time to the left of Karen how many there must be 10 to the left of Karen 10 to the left of Karen 10 and Karen must be 11 so left of Karen 5 5 plus 1 6 how many 10 right so how many more 4 more count it 4 plus 1 5 5 plus 5 10 10 plus 1 11 so that means Karen must be 11th from the left Karen is 11th from the left now we have to look at Manchu so now let's look at the Manchu part when we look at the Manchu how many people are to the how many girls are to the right of Manchu there are eight girls to the right of Manchu so eight girls are to the right of Manchu okay let's mark it this is Manchu here there must be eight to the right of Manchu must be eight so five five plus one is six and how many more five plus one six six plus two eight you count it back if you want to confirm it count it back two two plus one is three three plus five is eight and Manju is ninth from the right yes Manju is ninth from the right end Karen is what Karen is 11th from the left end and there are five girls in between them so there are two arrangements possible here this is the one of the arrangement and this is the second arrangement right here second arrangement okay so this is the second arrangement if this is the second arrangement how many girls in the row there are four here 4 plus 1 5 5 plus 5 10 and Karen is 11th or you can just look at this possibility here and the condition is clearly given that from the left end Karen is what 11th so that's Karen is 11th plus how many more with the Karen two more with the Karen so that's 13 up to here it's 11 11 plus 2 is 13 or you count it this way 4 plus 1 5 5 plus 5 10 11 11 plus 2 is 13 so that's 13 so 25 and 13 well there are two answers 25 is the correct answer 13 is the correct answer so the answer must you cannot be determined so final answer is what cannot be determined in this question question number 33 15 books are placed on a shelf before the book oxford dictionary so 15 books are placed on the shelf before Oxford Dictionary. So this is Oxford Dictionary, mark it as Audi. How many books before that? 15 books. So before Oxford Dictionary, we have 15 books. And well, 20 books are placed after the book Harry Potter. Harry Potter, after Harry Potter, we have 20 books. And the question is, how many books are placed on the shelf if tall books are placed in between Oxford Dictionary and the Harry Potter? How many? 12 are placed in between. Okay, so let's take a look at that. 12 in between. So now you count it. 15 plus 1 is 16. 16 plus 12 that is 28 28 plus 1 29 29 plus 20 that's 49 so we have the answer 49 right here and at the same time we have an answer cannot be determined so do we have a second possibility well it says that there are 15 books before Odi Oxford Dictionary and there are like 20 books after Harry Potter between them 12 it doesn't say that OD is to the left of HP. So that means you can take a second possibility by OD to the right of HP. In this case, HP is to the right of OD. Now you can take it the other way. So let's try that. Let's say HP is here. And this is OD. In between them is 12. HP, Audi, in between them 12. So we cannot change that any of the figures given in the question. So 12, it must be 
x are 12 and how many to the left of od to the left of od there must be 15 so 12 plus 1 13 13 plus 2 is 15 and to the right of HP, how many must be there? Right of HP must be 20. So we have 12 plus 1, 13. 13 plus 7 is what? 20. So ultimately, up to up to Ori what? Up to the left of Ori, say 15. Up to Ori is 16. So up to here is 16. 16 plus 7, how much is that? 16 plus 7, 23. So we have the second possibility, 23. Or you count this way, 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 12 plus 3 is 15, 16, 16 plus 7, 23. So 23 and 49, there are two possibilities. So the answer must be what? Cannot be determined. So that's the case, cannot be determined. So question number 34, the question is which guide is at the left extreme? That's a question, but directions for this question is not visible here. That means it's not really given. So this is what the directions I have written down those directions. J is third to the left, right of L, and L who is not adjacent to K, and M is two places to the left of L. So I'll read out those directions from the mail. So ultimately this is what the question is. Five guides are sitting in a row watching tourists. So it could be a tourist spot. Five guides are sitting in a row five of them they are watching the tourist and J is third to the right of L J is third to the right of L and L who is not adjacent to K L is not adjacent to K and M is two places to the left of N so M is two places to the left of N so that is what it is given to us now based on that we have two questions one of the question which guide is at the left extreme and we have a second question what is that question let me check the second question which guide is two places to the right of L. So first question, which guide is at the left extreme? Second question, which guide is two places to the right of L? So let's do it. In order to make the arrangement, what kind of an arrangement? This is what, one, two, three, four, five. They are sitting in a row. That is a linear arrangement, row wise. And how many? Five of them. And always this kind of situations we take our left as the left of this arrangement and our right as the right of this arrangement. So left is left, right is right. Now what are the conditions? J is third to the right of L. So J must be third to the right of L. So wherever L sits, J must be third to the right. If L is here, one, two, three, four, five positions. If L is here, J is what? Third to the right. So three places to the right from the first position, one plus three is four. So what is it? J must be here. If L is here, J must be here. One position to the right, second position to the right, third position to the right. Then L who is not adjacent to K. So L is not adjacent to K. So L is not adjacent to K, K cannot be here. Now, M is two places to the left of N. M must be two places to the left of N. So if N is here, then two places to the left, one, two. And M must be here. That is not possible. Already L is there. Then another possibility, N is here, then M is two places to the left, one, two. So M is here. N is here, M is here. Then who is missing? How many persons are here? That's given in the directions, so this directions, let me read the directions once again. There's uh, five guides. So these five guides, J, L, J, L, K. So what we have, next one is K, right? So K, what is given here? K is not adjacent to L. So here is only one place open for us, and that place is supposed to be K, but K cannot be adjacent to L. So this arrangement doesn't work at all. So is there a second arrangement possible? If there's a second arrangement, what is the second arrangement? So that case, we have to look at this way. One, two, three, four, five persons. Again, left, our left is the left, our right is the right. Then J is what, third to the right of L. It is, it is not really mentioned L is at the left end. L could be anywhere. 
So next possibility, L, if L is here, what happens then? J must be third to the right. So one, two, three, J must be third to the right of L. So J is third to the right of L. And L who is not adjacent to K. So that means K cannot be here and K cannot be here. So L and K are not adjacent. Now what is next? This condition, last condition, M is two places to the left of N. M must be two places to the left of N. So let's say N is here, M is two places to the left, M must be here. It's not possible. If N is here, where is M? M must be here. So M is two places to the left of N. Now where is K? K is here. So K is not adjacent to N. So that is perfectly all right. So that case, the arrangement is M, L, N, K, J. And now what is the question? Look at the question. 34, which guide is at the left extreme? So left extreme, M. So the answer is M. And next question, we use the same arrangement, M, L, N, K, J. So second question, what you have is 35. Which guide is two places to the right of L? Two places to the right of L. So L is here, two places to the right, one, two. So K is the answer, K. So that case, K is the answer. So we have done that. Now pick up the old one or pick the old one. So which is the one different from the group? We need to pick the old one. So here we have roast, boil, peel and fry. Roast, boil, peel and fry. So roast, boil, peel, fry. So actually this roasting, boiling and frying, all this are connected with cooking, right? Of course, it is kind of like we are using some kind of a heat. It could be microwave or it could be grill or it could be like, uh, like ordinary uh, oven, what you have at home, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, so the roast, boil, fry are cooking using fire or heat. But peel is what? Peeling something. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean that it's like for cooking. So let's say if you peel a banana, you don't cook it, right? What we do? We just eat it. So it could be fruits or vegetables, whatever it is, peel. So it is not really connected with cooking. So that peel is something which is different in the group. Now 37, 37, D is 4, duck is 39, then quacks. So what is the code for it? It's a coding decoding type of question. D is 4. Well, normal case, we know that D is 4 means that's uh, position value of D. So duck is 39. Duck is 39. D U C K is 39. How come D U C K is 39? We look at the position values. If D is 4, U is 21. C is 3 and K is 11. So ultimately 4 plus 7 plus 11 that's 18. 21 plus 18 is 39. Okay actually it's a sum of the position values. It's not that complicated. Sum of the position values we get what 39. So that's a code which is used here. Now that means quacks we have to just add the position values of all those letters. So let's try that. Quacks. First of all, mark the position values. This is one of the important things. You have to have the clear idea, a solid idea about this position values anytime you deal with this kind of question. So 17, 21, 1, 3, 11, and 19. So 19 plus 11, we know that's 30. So here 30, together it's 30. Then we have uh, 17 plus 3, that's 20. So 30 plus 20, 50. Then we have 22. 50 plus 22, that's 72. Okay, so among these answer choices, we have 142, 158, 172, 162. There is a difference of 100. So I think there is something with this ones. It is these ones are not supposed to be in the answer choices. There is some kind of a minor error there. So it is when you add it, just 11 and 19. Well, what you get is 30. And here 17 and 3, 20, so 50, 
50 plus 72. So this would be the, this supposed to be the answer, but it is given as 172. It is not 172, 72 answer. That's a minor error in the question. So this ones are, I think this ones are not supposed to be in the question. So anyhow, the answer is what? 72. All right, next one. 38. A, A, B, D, D, P. So this is something connected with the letters. A, A, 1 and 1. And B, D, 2 and 4. And D, P, 4 and 16. So do you see any connection here? This is 1 and 1, you take it as 11. Or this one, you can take it as 24. This one is 416. If you take it that way, you may not get the answer. Then this is A and A. A and same letter. That means A repeats. Here B and D. So B doesn't repeat. And here D and P. So D doesn't repeat. So what is this 1 and 1? This is 2 and 4. 2 and 4 means 2 into 2 is 4. Then 4 into 2 is 8. But it's 16. So next possibility 2 and 2 square. This one is what 4 and 4 square. So how about this one? First one. Does it fall into the same pattern? 1 and 1 square, is it possible? Yes, 1 square is 1. So 1 and 1 square, 2 and 2 square, 4 and 4 square. Next one is what? 5 and 5 square. 5 and 5 square. 5 square is 25. 5 is 5, E. So E and 25 is Y, E, Y. So next one. In a class, there are seven students, including boys and girls, Z, Y, X, W, V, U, and T. So how many? Seven. Or you can, if you take it in the ascending order, there's students are T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. They sit on three benches. The benches are one, two, and three. In such that, at least two students on each bench. So there are total seven students. And two students, at least two students on each bench. That means two plus two plus two, six students. Plus we have one more student. That one more student would be sitting on bench number one or two or three. We have no idea. Then what is the next part of the question? At least two students on each bench and at least one girl. At least one girl on each bench. Okay, so at least one girl on each bench. Then X, who is a girl? doesn't sit with Z, V and W. So that means it's a X is a girl and she doesn't sit with Z, V and W, three persons. She doesn't sit with the three persons. You, the boy, so this is you, the, it's a supposed to be a space here. You, the boy, student who sits with only Y. So you sits with only Y. So that means you and Y. Only Y means you and Y must be sitting on the same bench. And there is nobody else on that bench because you sits with only Y. Nobody else is there. Then what does it see? C sits on the bench one with his best friends. Z is on the first bench. And who are his best friends? Well, one thing we get it from here. Z sits on the bench with his best friends. So that means Z is a male. And T sits on the bench three. T is on the bench three. And V, V is the brother of X. So V is the brother of X means V is a male as well. So this is what the information given to us. The question number 39, maximum number of students sit in which row? And number 40, who is sitting with T? So these are the questions we have. Now we have to make that arrangement. Three benches, one, two, and three, right? So let's try that. So let's mark it as, let's say this is bench number one, bench number two, and bench number three. So these three benches. And which are the people or which are the students? X, who is a girl student, does not sit with. So X doesn't sit with what? This is X, she doesn't sit with. Who are they? Z, V, and W. So. V, 
W and Z. She doesn't sit with that three students. And this is bench number one, this is bench number two, and this is the third is bench number three. Because it's in the classroom, right? So if it's a classroom, the benches are arranged in a such a way that normal case, we have to assume that one bench and behind that another bench and behind that another bench. If there is no specific conditions are given, then this is the way we assume it. Oh, so X doesn't sit with those three people, then U boy sits with only Y. So U is sitting with only Y. So U and Y are together, nobody else in that, on that bench. The reason for that, U sits with only Y. And Z sits on the bench number 1. So Z must be on bench number 1. So this is Z, bench number with his best friends. So Z is a boy, male, with his best friends. So who are the friends? We have no idea. And T sits on bench number 3. So T is on bench number 3. So that means U and Y, they cannot sit on bench number 1 and bench number 3 because U sits with only Y. Nobody else can be with them. So U and Y must be here. So U is a boy and Y is here. And T sits on bench number 3 and V is the brother of X. So V is the brother, that means that's a male. And Z is a male as well, that's already been marked. Now, we have one more condition is given, at least one girl on each bench, at least one girl. So in this case, U is a boy, then Y must be a girl. And bench number 1, we have Z as a boy, so we need at least one girl on that bench. But X cannot sit on that bench because X and uh, Z cannot be on the same bench. Now where is X? X cannot sit on the second bench because U and Y are the only two people on second bench. And how about the third bench? Yes, X is on the third bench. And X must be a girl. Yeah, that's what it is given. X is a girl. If X is a girl, does it mean that T is a boy? You have to think of it. And who are the other people missing here? We have U is taken, Y is taken, so seven persons are there. U and Y and Z is taken, T and X are taken. So which are the people missing here? Five has already been taken. Now we have V and W are missing. So where V is a male. V is the brother of X. Now we have at least one girl on each bench. So W must be the girl on the bench number one. Because the W and V, they cannot take a sit on second bench. They cannot sit with X because X and uh, W, V, these people cannot sit together. X cannot sit with V and W. So since X is here, V and W cannot be here. So we have V and W here. So we have at least one girl. See here we have a girl, here we have a girl, here we have a girl. So that means T, is it a boy? Or a girl? We'll come to that. First of all, look at the questions. 39. Maximum number of students sits in which row? The row number 1. So 3 students, that's maximum number. Row number 1. And who is sitting with T? Who is sitting with T? T is here. Who is sitting with T? X is sitting with T. So we got the answer for those two questions. Sometimes you may get a question for these type of arrangements. That is, let's say if, if you had a question, question number 41, how many girls are in this, in this class? Or how many girls are in this arrangement? We have one girl here, another girl here, another girl here. Three girls. And those kind of questions, you may get the answer choices something like, let's say answer choices are three girls, four girls, two girls, five girls. So, well, one girl, this is one girl, two girls, and this is the third girl. And now, what is T? There is at least one girl on each bench, right? So, these cases, we have exactly one girl, this girl on the, one girl on second bench, and the third bench, at least one girl. So, X is a girl, and if T is a boy, then that case, the answer is what? 
three girls. But it is not necessary that T is a boy. It says that at least one girl on a bench. At least one girl means more than one girl is possible. So T can be a girl as well because the gender of T is not given. If T is a girl, you know what the answer could be four as well. So these kind of questions, definitely you can expect the last answer choice as cannot be determined or data inadequate. If you get such an answer choice, definitely go for data inadequate because the answer is what either three or four. There are two possibilities. Now, next question. Find the wrong number in the series. Find the wrong number. So, what kind of a series it is? Wrong number in the series means we need to find the pattern here. So, 2, 5, 8, 3, 9, 27, 4, 16, 64. So, 2, 5, 8, 3, 9, 27, well, 3, 3 square, 3 cube. At a glance, we can see that. This is 4, 4 square, 4 cube. So naturally, this one, 2, 2 square, 2 cube. Well, 5, 5 is not 2 square. So the answer, which is wrong, 5 is wrong number. 5 is the wrong number. Now, number 42. 3, 1, 3, 10, 21, 64, 193, 388. So what is the pattern? First of all, what is a pattern? Once you get the pattern, you can get the wrong number. 1, 3, 10. 21, 64, 193, 388. 1 and 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 plus 11 is 21. Okay, so differences are what? 2. 2 is the difference. Then next difference is 7. Next is 11. And 21 and 64, that difference is what? 43 so 2 7 11 43 then 64 and 193 so that difference is 130 okay 130 actually it's 129 that difference but it doesn't work we don't get a pattern now is there anything else we see that the question is not to find the next number in the series. We need to find the wrong number in the series. So here it's 1 and 3, 3 and 10, 10 and 21, 21 and 64. If you take a closer look, 1 into 3 is 3. Okay, that's good. 3 into 3 is 9 plus 1, 10. Then 10 into 2, 10 into 2 plus 1 is 21. 21 into 3 plus 1, okay, so into 2, 1, into 2 plus 1, into 3 plus 1, next one into, what is next, into 4 plus 1, 64 into 4, that is going to be, how much is that, 64, 60 into 4, 240 something, right, so this is 193, doesn't work, how about like into 2 plus 1, into 3 plus 1, here into 3 plus 1, so into 3 plus 1, into 2 plus 1, and how about this is into 3 plus 1. Next one is into 2 plus 1. Is it possible? 64 into 2, 128. Well, 128 plus 1 is 129. If it is 129 is the correct number, 129, next 129 into 3 plus 1. Okay, before we complete that, is it possible to get the same pattern here? Into 2 plus 1, into 3 plus 1. How about like, is it 1 into 2? 1 into 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, so that is possible. Into 2 plus 1 into 3 plus 1. Into 2 plus 1 into 3 plus 1. Here it's 64 into 2 plus 1, 129. So 129 into 3 plus 1. Seems like a pattern is good. So 129 into 3. 100 into 3? 300. 29 into 3? 87. Okay. So, if it is 87, 300 plus 87, 387, plus 1 is 388. So, 129 into 3 plus 1 is 388. So, 388 is the correct number. Then, which one is the wrong number? 193 is the wrong number. So, that is the answer. 193. Now, 43. This question, look at this number. I mean, this uh, question, A something missing, B, B, C, something missing, A, A, B, B, those kind of things. So what is the pattern? A, 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 B, B, C, C. 
A, A, B, B, C, C. Is that the pattern? Or anything else? A, B, B, A, B, 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 C. Then A, 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 B, B, C, C. Well, there are different possibilities of looking at it. But at the same time, what I have mentioned the first time, this is what? A, A, B, B, C, C. Then A, A, B, B, C, C. So if you continue that way, what do you get it here? A, A, B, B, C, C. So A, A, B, B, C, C. So A, A, B, B, C, C. So that's about it. So what is the answer? A, C, B, A. So A, C, B, A is the answer. And the pattern is A, A, B, B, C, C. A, A, B, B, C, C. So that's a pattern. A, C, B, A. Okay, good. Now 44. 44, what is it? Mandatory and obligatory. So mandatory, obligatory, what is the connection? Mandatory means it's obligatory. So there's synonyms, right? And we need to find another pair with a similar connection here. Similar connection means mandatory and obligatory are synonyms. So we need to get another pair here with the same with the same relation. That means synonyms. So murky and lucid, what is it? Murky, murky means something which is not clear. Lucid means something clear. So this is, these are Andronyms, so that cannot be the answer. This is synonym. And filth and clean, of course, filth and clean anonyms. How about bemuse confuse? Abhor and love. Abhor is hate and love. Abhor and love, these are antonyms, right? So then bemuse and confuse. Yes, bemuse means confuse. So bemuse and confuse, it is pretty much the same meaning. So that's synonyms. So the answer is what? Bemuse and Confused. That would be the answer. Now, next question. 3 and 18. 3, 18. What is the connection? 3 and 18. 3 into 6 is 18. So, 5 into 6 is 30. So, if you have an answer choice 30, that would be the perfect answer. But we don't have such an answer. So what is the next possibility? Anything else? 3. How many times is 18? 3 into 9 is 18. No, 3 into 6, that's already been taken, right? Or oh, there's a connection, 9. 18 is 2 times of 9, right? So what is 9? 9 is 3 square. 3 square into 2. So 18 is what? 3 square into 2. So 5, 5 square into 2. 5 square into 2 is what? 5 square is 25. 25 into 2. This is 3 square into 2. 5 square into 2 is what? 50. We don't have such an answer to us. What else do? What else do we do? Another possibility, what we have, 18 is, this is 3, right? So 18, 27 and 18, the difference is 9. So 9 is bracketed from 27. So what is 27? 3 cube. 3 cube minus 3 square. Then 5, similar way, 5 cube minus 5 square. 5 cube is 125. 125 minus 5 square. 5 square is 25. So what is the answer? 100. 125 minus 25. Next one, word analogy. Ornithology is the birds. Ornithology is the study of birds. And penology is what? Study of pens. If it's a study of pens, yeah, we have the answer choice here, study of pens. Is that correct? Ornithology is a study of birds. Penology, is it the study of pens? Or is the study of poison? That is toxicology, study of poison. Then pendulum, study of pendulums. Have you ever heard of that? So study of pendulum, uh, area which studies about pendulums. We heard of like uh, paleontology, we heard of like uh, archaeology, those kind of things. However, we never heard of like a uh, area of science or any kind of arts which studies pendulums. I never heard of it. How about prison? Is that an area of social science or science which study about like which studies about prison? 
Well, penology. What is penology? Have you ever heard of that word connected with pen? Penalize. Have you ever heard of the word penalize? Or penalty? Penalty. All these words are connected with penology. Penalize. So, penalty. You know what? When you are penalized for something which is done wrong. So that is penology or penalizing, right? So, so penology is different. That's the study of penalizing it. Actually, you know what? Uh, the penology and if it is penalization and if it is penalty and if the people do something which is serious offense, if it is kind of like uh, smaller offenses, there will be like penalization, penalty, fine, those kind of things would be there. If it's serious offense, there will be these people would be sent to the prison, right? So actually, you know what, penology is the study of prison. So that's the answer. Now, now 47. 47, a boy goes to school from his house. Exact one quarter of his way, he crosses a coffee shop. One quarter of his way. So one fourth of his way. So this is his house. It starts from here. And one fourth of his way, he crosses a coffee shop. So this is the coffee shop. And on the three quarters of his way, he crosses a village of his three quarter. So here it's one quarter. There's another quarter. Then we have one more quarter. So three quarters of his way, he crosses a village of his. If he needs total 20 minutes to walk from his home to school. So he needs what? This is one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. Now we have another one fourth. So that is where his school is supposed to be. And if he needs total 20 minutes to walk from his home to school, then how long it will require for him to walk from coffee shop to village office? So 20 minutes, if it is 20 minutes is the total time. So every quarter is five, 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 Five minutes. Now, the time, how long it requires him to walk from coffee shop to village office. Coffee shop to village office. Five plus five, ten minutes. So the answer is what? Ten minutes. Now, 48. Anophilophobia. That's a phobia of mosquitoes. It's not the fear. Phobia means unnecessary fear. If the mosquito stings you, then definitely there is a chance or you may not like it, those kind of things. But even before it stings it, if and you see the mosquito, if you kind of like think about mos mosquito, then if you are kind of having a irrational fear in your mind, that is called phobia, anophilophobia. And what is ergophobia? Ergophobia, is it like uh, work? Phobia towards work? Or it's like strangers? Or is it like speed? Or is it like none of this? What is the answer? Any of this, uh, are you aware of this? Strangers, the phobia towards strangers is xenophobia. Xenophobia. And how about the speed? The phobia towards speed is uh, tachophobia. Taco. Especially when you travel on certain kind of uh, vehicles, either like some of the two wheelers or maybe like some of the private buses, you may have this tachophobia. Even KSRDC, some of the KSRDC. So you may have tachophobia. That's a phobia towards the speed. If it is the travel is safe and if it's vehicle traveling at higher speed, then that would be fine. But if it's rash driving, people may have that kind of phobia, tachophobia. All right, so what is ergophobia? Is it like none of this or is it like phobia towards work? Ergonomics, have you ever heard of ergonomics? Ergonomics is an area which study about the people at work body positions, all those kind of things, people at work. That's ergophobia. Uh, I mean, that's ergonomics. So ergophobia, ergo is something which is connected with work. Ergo is work. So ergonomics is the study of the people in work and ergophobia is a phobia towards work. Have you ever heard that like uh, the one of the Malayalam movies says that I'm just looking for to get a job to take a leave. That is the same thing here. The people having ergophobia, 
well they may like to have a job but they don't like to work that is called ergophobia irrational fear for work okay for this question seven laptops are displayed inside an electronic shop on a platform facing west so this items are facing west all of these items all of these laptops are facing west and these laptops are of apple dell hp eyeball lenovo sony and toshiba so let's look at the laptops and conditions given toshiba is fourth to the right of hp an eyeball is adjacent to the dell and sony apple is immediate right of toshiba hp which is third to the left of dell is at one end so how many seven laptops one two three four five six seven if it is seven laptops all of them are facing the same direction so these laptops if they are all facing that direction we are all facing that direction as well so we have to take in such a way that whatever these items which direction whichever the direction they are facing that would be the direction we are facing as well so in this case when we look at the board we are all facing that direction for the time being we take that as the west so that's the west direction now toshiba is four to the right of hp so wherever hp toshiba is fourth to the right eyeball is adjacent to dell and sony so eyeball is adjacent to dell and sony that means eyeball called ib is adjacent to dell and sony so one side it's dell the other side it's sony or it could be the other way sony is here eyeball then we have dell is here however we have no idea which is the exact arrangement these are two possibilities Apple is immediate right of Toshiba. So Apple immediate right of Toshiba. Toshiba, if Toshiba is here, Apple is immediate right. And HP, which is third to the left of Dell, is at one end. HP, which is third to the right of Dell. So HP must be third to the right of Dell, is at one end. So HP must be to the right of Dell and must be third to the right. At the same time, what is that? That HP is at one end. So if HP is at the left end, think about it. HP is at the left end, HP must be third to the right, third to the left of Dell. Okay, it's so fine. HP if at this end, HP must be third to the left of Dell. So if HP is here, it is third to the left of Dell. So Dell must be one, two, three. So HP is third to the left of Dell. At the same time, and it says that HP at one end. If HP is on this end, then you know what? HP is third to the left of Dell. So then Dell must be somewhere here. That's not possible because that's the right end. We cannot have any laptop after the right end. And if we cannot have any laptop before the left end, because this is the left end, we cannot have any of the laptop on this side, and we cannot have any of the laptop on that side. So that case, if HP comes over here, HP at one end. So HP can be here, but when HP comes over here, Dell must be somewhere here because HP must be third to the left of Dell. So that is not possible. So only possibility HP is here, Dell is here. Now, since Dell is here, D, I, S, I mean D and eyeball and S. So D, then eyeball, then S. That's possible. Or S and eyeball and D is here. So there are two possibilities. At the same time, you have to look at this possibility. Toshiba is four to the right of HP. So HP is here. Toshiba is four to the right. One, two, three, four. So Toshiba is here. And Apple is here. Apple is in immediate right of Toshiba. Now, the only possibility we have for Dell, Eyeball, and Sony, DBS. DBS is not possible. Then S, B, D. S, this is B means eyeball and this is D. Okay, that's done. And which is the laptop missing here? Lenovo is missing here. So we put Lenovo right here. That's the only position open. And is there any other arrangement possible here? Before you get into the questions, always look for as the possibility of a second arrangement. It's not necessary that you have, we can have a second arrangement, but always check out that possibility. In this case, is there a second arrangement possible? I don't see that. So the answer we have to look at the questions and find the answer. What is the question? 49. 
which laptop is fourth to the right of Sony? Sony is here, fourth to the right. One, two, three, four. So that is Apple. So Apple is fourth to the right of Sony. Okay, now the answer is what? Apple. Now next question. Next question is based on the same arrangement. So if HP and Toshiba interchange their positions, so HP and Toshiba, so HP and T, then which is second to the left of HP? Okay, let's check it out. HP and Toshiba interchange. So Toshiba comes over here and HP goes here. Then that case, which is second to the left of HP? So HP is here now. Now second to the left is eyeball. So the answer must be eyeball. So in this case, eyeball is the answer. So this is how we deal with the questions when it comes to the exam. We see different varieties of questions so far, like number series, letter series, a repeating letter series, the find the wrong one out in the number series, then arrangement type of questions, odd one out, all the varieties of questions. So it's a pleasure working with you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.